One of the most fascinating characters present in Berserk's narrative is actually that of Gambino, Gut's adopted father. Throughout the entirety of Berserk, the main theme of Gut's life is that of perseverance, surviving and clinging to life no matter how difficult things might get. In his moment of birth, Guts was born from the corpse of a nameless, forgotten woman that was hung from a tree. His origin was nothing but death, lying alone on the ground in a pool of his mother's blood. But it was Gambino, his partner Shisu, and his mercenary gang that found him and spared his life. Shisu was a woman who suffered emotional shock from a recent miscarriage, and here she found a child to fill that void. Though everyone told her that he was nothing but a bad omen, she found a child who needed a mother just as much as she needed a son, and she cared for him with everything she had. Yet she was short-lived. When Guts was only three years old, he was forced to carry the burden of comforting his adopted mother in her final moments, because Gambino was out in battle and couldn't see her. Already off the bat, our impression of Gambino is that of a selfish and unempathetic man. Rather than being here for his woman in her final moments, he'd rather avoid it. He's not one to be vulnerable or honest about his feelings, instead choosing to push them to the side and bury them deep down. Because without Shisu, now Guts is forced to live with the abuse and neglect of Gambino's harsh teachings. He learns the way of the sword, and is forced into the battle at a ridiculously young age. Shisu was the one who brought him to this party, and therefore was the only one who loved him. And she ended up dead. Her health was already failing from the get-go, but as a result of that, Guts is still blamed for it, being viewed as a bad omen. Gambino, in his own way, blames and dehumanizes Guts for that, and as a consequence, the poor child is starved for love and affection. He's desperate for Gambino's approval, longing for the love that Shisu can now no longer give him. But the only thing that truly gives him comfort is the very blade that he clutches to every night a normal-sized sword that is much too big for his tiny body to carry, but that he stubbornly stays dedicated to regardless. Because Guts wants Gambino's approval so badly, he bites off so much more than he can chew, and from that point forward, this became the only way he knew to truly express himself. Gambino is interesting to me, in the grand scheme of things, because he's the very reason that Guts sets out on this journey in the first place. He precedes Griffith, but in his own way, serves as a prelude to him. He's the reason that Guts grows up to be stoic and standoffish, but also desperate for approval and love. He's also the reason that fighting becomes the one thing that Guts clings to. But in his own way, he's essentially the anti-Griffith. Just as cruel and selfish, but in turn, much less respectable. Griffith was a man with ambition, who looked beyond the comrades he had to the future he desired, and despite sympathizing with and displaying kindness to each and every one of them, still chose to sacrifice them when his ambition crumbled. Griffith's cruelty was tactical, much in the same way that his affection and kindness was as well. But through all of that, Guts was the only person he ever truly loved, and that confusing feeling almost cemented his indifferent cruelty. But Gambino is much different. Griffith never did anything cruel without feeling he needed to do it. He simply chose power over those that were closest to him. But Gambino is a man who never lets anyone get close to begin with, and actively pushes them away with cruelty. Whereas Griffith was tactical and ambitious, Gambino is aimless and without purpose. He lost the one closest to him, and got stuck with a child he never wanted to begin with. He's a man who feels weighed down by his circumstances, and as a consequence, lashes out at everything he holds dear. Be it his own men, his own dog, Shisu, it really doesn't matter. Gambino is one that clings to the past with bitter spite, which is a sharp juxtaposition to Griffith's hopeful determination for the future. Yet even despite this blatant anger and cruelty, Gambino still praises Guts from time to time, something he finds genuinely confusing. Like when he scars Guts' face during training, and refuses to take accountability until much later when he gives him an ointment. It's also revealed that the reason he wasn't there for Shisu was not cruelty or indifference. It's actually shown to be one of his biggest regrets, in one of the most painful scenes yet. In his line of work, he's probably had countless women, but Shisu's death still haunts him even six years later. Because of this, it's pretty much his responsibility to take care of Guts, and from time to time, what little affection he does show to Guts is likely his attempts at trying to honor that, to harden Guts into a strong warrior so that he can survive and live a long life the way that Shisu wanted him to. But alongside those feelings of responsibility are feelings of resentment. Guts being viewed as a bad omen almost causes Gambino to believe that he really is the reason she's dead. She passed by natural causes, and now Gambino doesn't have anyone to pin the blame on, so he gets carried away in his training. 
He becomes an easy excuse to blame for everything wrong in his life, which is even further cemented by him losing his leg, a part of himself. Of course, the most controversial aspect of Gambino's abuse, which was cut out of various adaptations, is his decision to sell Guts as a prostitute to one of his own men, that being Donovan. Many people have commented on the slightly racist depiction here, but considering characters like Casca and Silat, I kind of just chalk that up to irresponsibility. Essentially, the experience with Donovan is a result of Gambino actively benefiting off the suffering of his own pupil, but it's different from the way that Griffith chooses to do it. Gambino has lived his life through the way of the sword, clinging to survival above all else, and dehumanizes and practically resents Guts for circumstances outside of his control. It's easy to sell him off to a rapist for three silver coins when he isn't watching what the man does to him, and in turn benefits from it. Even despite his kindness, that resentment and hatred for Guts still lingers, and in turn causes him to make really cruel and shitty decisions, but what's also fascinating is that Gambino is hung over the following day, and almost seems to be acting as if it didn't happen at all, implying rather subtly that he might have been drunk when he made this decision. But as if karma itself had eaten him up, he loses his leg right afterwards, which only further cements his disdain and abhorrence for Guts. Rather than looking at this as the consequences of his own actions, he decides that Guts should be snuffed out and killed because he truly is a bad omen. He's the reason that Shisu died, he's the reason that he lost his leg, no matter what, keeping Guts around has been nothing but trouble. But even so, he once again only does this while drunk, even confiding in his choice to let Donovan rape Guts while doing so. However, Karma will not give this man a break, as he ends up being killed by Guts with the very sword he gave him his final words accusing him of being the one who killed Shisu. Guts' childhood is a very traumatic one. It's one of pain and loss. The only person who ever truly loved him died, and as a consequence he was blamed for it and forced to carry that burden for the remainder of his time with a father figure that refused to give him the acceptance he craved. Over and over again, he was beaten, abused, and taken advantage of by those much older and much more fortunate than him. But no matter how hard he worked to impress Gambino, he still tried to kill him in the end, and had to defend himself. So now he carries the guilt of feeling as if he's responsible for Shisu's death, and alongside that the burden of killing Gambino. So he runs away, while Gambino's men chase him down, and eventually stumbles into a pack of wolves that attack him. Now with nothing left to live for, he decides to accept his death. But that reflex that Gambino taught him still hasn't gone away, and he continues to fight with nothing left to keep him going, a decision that confuses even himself, and yet it's one that he sticks to with great conviction, becoming a mercenary that lives to fight. And so, who was Gambino? He was a selfish, arrogant man that was thrust with the responsibility of taking care of a child that he never asked for from the dying wish of the only person he ever truly loved. His arc is one of struggle, repeatedly bouncing back and forth between genuinely caring for Guts and genuinely despising. What I think is fascinating about a character like Gambino is that it's difficult to say that he 100% hated Guts, just as much as it's difficult to say that he secretly loved him. His feelings are complex and nuanced in a way that only Berserk is truly capable of, and this is the impetus for the entire series moving forward. In many ways, Guts grows up to be similar to Gambino, and even though he stops referenced directly, his presence and general effect on Guts still lingers throughout the rest of the series. 